This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Jerry Falwell Jr. is back in the news once again because uh, the year of our Lord 2020 has been terrible for a lot of people, but it's been especially bad for this man of God right here. Now, when we say that it's been bad for him, you should know that it's entirely the result of his own actions, but... It's just that he's been in the news more frequently over well, the past well, few months. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> Back to fuck <laughs> me again. Yeah, it's just constant rake stepping from mm -hmm. this guy. It's bad decision making, it's blatant hypocrisy, and much, much more. But before we get started, in case you need a, well, I guess not so quick refresher, Jerry Falwell Jr. is the now fail son of Jerry Falwell, a Baptist pastor who had a uh, a terrible take ready for nearly every bad event that happened during his lifetime. Like, you know, 9-11 was the result of America's sins. Uh, the Teletubbies were evil because he believed that the uh, the media claimed that one of them was gay. Tinky winky. Yeah. Turned my kids gay. Yeah, because it had the triangle on That's the head. That's right. Yeah. Uh, shit, shit like that. Like, anytime something would happen that was in the mainstream media... Yeah. He had like some weird Something just biblical take on quick it. Quick on the draw with the the worst, most cringeworthy Christian take. He also skinned a man's cat alive and made him eat it. Well, that was his father. That's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh well no, I think that was that was Jerry Falwell original OG Jerry, Jerry Falwell Prime's father. Oh. Uh, skinned a cat and fed it to the cat's owner. But okay. yeah, that's the kind of family we're dealing with. Yes. Anyways. Falwell Sr., he co-founded what would become one of the largest evangelical Christian universities in the world, Liberty University, which uh, surprisingly has a lot of rules for yeah. their students for a place named Liberty. Yes. Uh, yes. Anyway, Falwell Sr., he died way back in 2007. He got all of his bad takes out, and he's have to return to my home planet. Now he's Heaven. currently uh, burning in hell, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, meanwhile, Jerry Falwell Jr., the man seen here, the fail son of Jerry Falwell Prime, he would eventually carry on his father's legacy of not only being a shithead with terrible beliefs, but also by becoming the president of Liberty University as part of a succession plan that the elder Falwell had laid out before his death. Mm -hmm. now, the Falwells are also uh, clearly one of the inspirations for the show Righteous Gemstones. Like, pretty much the inspiration. Yeah. And uh, boy, has it turned out that their real-life drama has mirrored what went on within that show in a rapid amount of time. Yeah. It is life imitating art imitating life. It's pretty crazy. Anyways, cut to 2016, and Falwell Jr. becomes one of the first prominent evangelicals to throw his support onto Donald Trump and his campaign to become president. Which, uh, believe it or not, I know we we know it's been a few years, but mm -hmm. it actually upset a lot of traditional Christians back then who looked down on this endorsement of a man who is clearly as corrupt as could be. Like mm -hmm. a picture perfect representation of uh, an unchristian like person. Yeah, Ted Cruz was very much the choice of the uh, mm -hmm. the religious right wing. But uh, yeah. Falwell, it's like this guy, he's been married like three times, tons of affairs, just vulgar, yeah. uh, completely like out of touch, never been to church. That's our man. Well, come to find out, they shared a lawyer named Michael Cohen uh, for a long time before the presidential election. Mm. Anyways, uh, when he endorsed him, even people, uh, alumni from Liberty, Liberty University, they claimed that uh, Falwell Jr. had clearly sold his soul to Trump. So something mm -hmm. had to be up. Yeah. Now, there's a few more important things that pop up for Mr. Falwell Jr. between 2016 and present day, but we'll jump back to those once we talk about this year. So Falwell Jr. first started popping up in the news this year because he was one of the first people to spit in the face of scientists and doctors in regards to the coronavirus pandemic. First, by claiming in early March that the virus was either an overblown hoax or that it was a collaboration between North Korea and China or that it was part of some plan to take down Trump. Take your pick. They all kind of, I guess, work together. It's a total hoax, but it was also designed in a lab. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, in mid-March, still on the coronavirus train, he reopened Liberty University after their spring break, which at that point, this is mid-March we're talking about here. People were still at least trying to act like they were going to handle this pandemic. Yeah, well. everyone was like, all right, we do this for a month and yeah, uh, we'll see what good. happens. <laughs> but not him. He was like, nope. You guys are coming back from spring break and you're coming right back to campus. That's right. And you're going to wear your pants above your belly button. And everyone gets, you lick the doorknob when you come in the building. Yeah. It's a faith test. Yeah. Uh, anyway, at the time that Liberty University welcomed students back to campus, most states were still basically closed down for all but essential services like grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And would it surprise you to learn that students started testing positive for COVID-19 within days of returning back to the university? Wow. 
Uh, a few weeks later, the university was sued by at least one student who alleged that the school had put students at severe physical risk of COVID-19 contagion and made extremely dangerous and irresponsible decisions. Mm -hmm. um, but yet now let's fast forward to June of this year, because that's when Jerry Falwell Jr. did, did what we in the industry like to call a uh, pro gamer move <laughs> yeah. by uh, claiming that he would only wear a mask if it featured the image from Virginia Governor Ralph Northam's medical school yearbook, which... You'll recall uh, yeah. it, it showed students, one wearing a Ku Klux Klan hood and the other with blackface, the governor being, uh, he couldn't remember which one he was. I, yeah, and they, like, a lot of the reporting on this was like, well, he, he doesn't know if he's even in the photo. He says he could be one of the people in it, but we're, we're not sure. So it's like he kind of got away with it because like you couldn't clearly identify him as one of the people. Yeah. So it's like, I think at first he was like, well, I don't know which one I am. And then he was like, well, I'm neither of them. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so, yeah. Jerry Falwell Jr., tweeted out that image and mm -hmm. been like, well, if I have to wear a mask, it better have this image on it. Yeah. Not well, understanding that that would be, that, that's uh, still a racist I'll thing only, to say. It's like the same thing. We talked about this before, but it's like uh, conservatives that use uh, swastikas to protest against people they think are Nazis. Yeah. And of but course- they just end up looking like Nazis. Yeah. The, this whole thing is- I'm going to put a racist image on my face to yeah. show that you're the real racist. Uh, the whole Virginia blackface thing. We talked about this previously a lot. It's it's a weird coincidence in the state of Virginia that, uh, you know, so many of their politicians somehow ended up in blackface. It's just an old Virginia tradition, you know. <laughs> it is for it lovers, happens. after all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Falwell's tweet on that subject was sent to mock Ralph Northam's coronavirus mask mandate by showing what is alleged to be him in either blackface or the KKK hood, or not at all. We don't know. Yeah. But it was definitely him on in one of those costumes. Yeah. And, but the tweet itself didn't come across that way. Yeah. It just seemed a bit weird and racist, mm -hmm. from coming, especially coming from a guy who is yeah. an evangelical Christian. Yeah. So anyways, he apologized for that whole ordeal, but he wasn't out of the news yet because just a few short weeks ago, an image surf surfaced of him on board a yacht with his pants undone and he was drinking what people assumed to be booze. Black water. With a woman who wasn't his wife, who was also in a state of undress. And also pregnant? Yes. Uh, at this point, <laughs> we should probably take a second here and say that we're not ones to kink shame. And we're also aware that plenty of men and women cheat on their spouses and that those things should probably just be dealt with privately. But when specifically talking about conservative Christians, stuff like this photo and what we're going to talk about next, it, it just reeks of hypocrisy. Because specifically in the case of Falwell Jr., any of his students uh, at the university or people who attend any of his family's churches would have suffered some variation of consequence for sins like these. Yep. Yeah. But back to that boat photo, though, or yacht photo, the man owns Don't, a don't call it yacht. a boat, please. Yeah. I didn't work my way up through my dad's university yeah. to become president for you to call my yacht a boat. I inherited a lot from my dad's collection plate. It's not some dinghy. <laughs> This is a yeah. yacht, goddammit. Yeah, I ethically stole from so many people to get yeah. this fucking yacht. Tax-free. Yeah. So yeah, it was a weird out-of-character thing for a high-ranking member of the evangelical Christian faith to post online. Unless you think he was consuming some sort of devil water-like alcohol, uh, he got ahead of that in the photo description where it read, I promise that's just black water in my glass. It was a prop only. Yeah. Okay. Lies detected. Uh, that photo was deleted shortly after it was posted. Then he attempted to explain himself in an audio interview where he uh, he sounded pretty drunk. Yeah, he was slurring his words. Uh, yeah, and he promised to be a good little boy. Uh, and I'm just going to throw it to you. What was up with that picture on Instagram? You know, it was weird because she could She was she's pregnant, so she couldn't get her she couldn't get her pants up. <laughs> and so I was like trying to like. My, I had on a pair of jeans that I haven't worn in a long time, so I couldn't get mine zipped either. And so, <laughs> and so I just put my belly, I just put my belly out like hers, and it was just. Um, she's my wife's assistant, and she's a sweetheart. And I should never put it up because it embarrassed her. Because um, anyway, I, I've apologized to everybody. And I promise my kids, I'm gonna try to be. I'm gonna try to be a good boy from here on out. <laughs> All right. So, and this is this, with this TV show, this this Trader Park Boys thing. Yeah, yeah. whatever, whatever. <laughs> it was just the, it was the costume party on the, uh, uh, and we, we were on vacation. And anyway, long story short, it was just uh, just just a good fun. That's it. He's gonna be a good boy from here on out. Mm -hmm. Literally, he said. Yeah, that is weird. I'm gonna be a good boy. Yeah, uh, and then uh, allegedly he took a leave of absence from Liberty University. Allegedly, 
Yeah. And everyone's like, okay, that makes sense. Oh, well, so that's what he did, right? Job well done. Yeah. Everything's good. Good. Anyways, that brings us to this week and the confirmation that, among many other things, this man, Jerry Falwell Jr., is a cuck. Cuck? And it's weird. It's always the ones you totally and completely expect, mm -hmm. right? It's weird that both him and Roger Stone turned out to be such cucks when it was very clear that all of these people thought it was only liberals who could be cucks. Yeah. Yeah, strange. Turns out they were the cucks all along. They were the cucks. And they loved it. Mm -hmm. They loved everything. The mighty of it. cucks. Again, not kink shaming. It's just hypocritical because we're talking about Jerry Falwell Jr. here. So who cucked this man? Well, believe it or not, it was a humble pool boy which fucked this man's Who wife. Who wrote this <laughs> shit? I know. <laughs> this episode of reality sucks. It the was, pool boy? It was a humble pool boy which fucked this man's wife in front of him. And not just any pool boy. A pool boy who was previously wrapped up in a lawsuit alongside Mr. Falwell due to a bad business deal between Falwell, that pool boy, and a separate father and son business team regarding a hostel in Miami. And I think we covered this. A long time ago, as part of that Michael Cohen thing. Yes. Yeah. And in the midst of all of this, Michael kind Cohen of forgot had to, about it. But, Michael uh, Cohen had to clean up a mess because f apparently Falwell Jr. was showing off and sending naked and yeah. fucked up photos of his wife to people, being like, "Hey, didn't she look great? Maybe you want to fuck her in front of me." Yeah. So that yeah, that was like a footnote to the Michael Cohen stuff. Kind of forgot about it. But it was like that's weird. Yeah, and it's, it was also uh, weird because <laughs> the hostel was like this, uh, reportedly like this forty room, twenty dollar a night debaucherous hostel mm -hmm. with like uh, like just nonstop parties. It had a liquor store attached to it. Yeah, just again, not something you would expect the head of Liberty University man to of be God. involved with. Man yeah. of cloth. So yeah, that pool boy's name is Giancarlo Granda, and he has now spoken out about his relationship his sexual relationship mm -hmm. with both Falwell Jr. and his wife, Becky, in an interview with Reuters that uh, also provides audio of the three of them discussing their relationship. Uh, quote, Giancarlo Granda says he was 20 when he met Jerry and Becky Falwell while working as a pool attendant at the Fontainebleau Miami Beach Hotel in <laughs> March 2012. Starting that month and continuing into 2018, Granda told Reuters that the relationship involved him having sex with Becky Falwell while Jerry Falwell looked on. Granda showed Reuters emails, text messages, and other evidence that he says demonstrate the sexual nature of his relationship with the couple, who have been married since 1987. Quote, Becky and I developed an intimate relationship, and Jerry enjoyed watching from the corner of the room, yeah, nice. Granda said in yeah. an interview. Now 29, he describes the liaisons as frequent, multiple times per year, and said the encounters took place at hotels in Miami and New York and at the Falwell's home in Virginia. Now, because of the photo on the yacht, all I can picture is Falwell sitting in the corner with his pants undone, his belly out, and a glass of devil water yeah. in his hand, just, just jerking it. Come on, man. If you're going <laughs> to fuck my wife, fuck my wife. Give her the business. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Uh, uh, anyways, the article continues. The material Granda showed Reuters includes screenshots from what Granda said was a FaceTime conversation he had with the Falwells in 2019. During that call, Granda said Becky was naked as the two discussed their relationship while Jerry peeked from behind a door. You guys fucking in there? <laughs> oh, you better be. You fucking my wife yet? <laughs> yeah, you better give it to her good, goddamn. Get damn. that dick up and fuck my wife. Reuters was able to verify Granda's description of the screenshots. Nice. Uh, Gr <laughs> Granda also shared uh, an audio recording that he says captures a conversation that he had with the Falwells in 2018. In it, Becky complained about Granda describing his relationships with other people. Quote, he's like telling me every time he hooks up with people, like I don't have feelings or something. Uh, Jerry then chimed in, you're going to make her jealous. I'm not trying to do that, Granda replied. And as we said earlier, Reuters, they posted this specific audio conversation on Twitter. And there's a link in the description below if you want to listen to it. They, I love the way that they have it, too, because they give a full description of, like, by the way, this man was getting cucked. Yeah. Here's the audio. And the way that they, like, show it off, they, like, highlight each person's picture. It's like a cool, like, uh, RPG kind of listen along. Now, listen, John Carlo. If you're going to be fucking my wife, my wife don't want you to be fucking nobody else. Yeah, apparently he was on, like, Tinder and some other apps, and, like, yeah. she'd get super jealous about uh -uh -uh. it. Uh-uh-uh. Yeah. No. Probably why the business soured. Yeah. Earlier texts show a friendly and romantic dynamic between Granda and Becky Falwell. One 2012 text message, which Granda said came from Becky, read in part, Right now I'm just missing you like crazy. Have you had this effect on all of your lady friends? Again, jealous. Now yeah. she's the one getting cucked. This is why poly polyamory is a uh, prickly, prickly thing to get into. People yeah. get jealous. You, know, you don't think you're going to get jealous, and then your pool boy starts fucking, fucking other people, and mm -hmm. it just throws the whole dynamic. We had a, we had a perfect triangle here. <laughs> Where the pool boy fucked the wife 
Well, you the, turned it well, into Jared an octagon. Falwell watched, and <laughs> now you just keep adding links to the chain. It's getting messy. Yeah. Anyway, for his part, Jerry Falwell, the cuck, categorically denies all of this cuckoldry, and yeah. uh, he, he, you know, he simply decided to throw his wife under the bus by publicly, publicly stating to conservative outlet the Washington Examiner uh, that actually just his wife had an affair, and that Granda was using the affair to extort money from Falwell. It was all a diabolical plan by this twenty-year-old at the time pool boy. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck this guy's wife and then extort him. Yeah. Yes. And she'll fuck me because I'm young and hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quote, Granda denies any such intent, saying he was seeking to negotiate a buyout from a business arrangement he says he had with the couple. Uh, referring to the business deal we mentioned earlier, where uh, for some reason they all decided to go in on a Miami area flop house hostel for yeah. some reason. Uh, yeah. So that's what he's talking about there. Mm -hmm. Look, there was no fucking. We all just were in business on this when den of sin that this religious family owns. When you're in one of those cool, fun Miami hostels, you know, you don't know where your wife ends and the pool boy begins. Yeah, so you know, sometimes, it's a fun mystery. Sometimes the lights go out and, you know, you can never be sure where your, your penis is. Sometimes you may or may not accidentally fuck your wife's assistant, and that could be your baby inside her. You're not sure. You're not sure, but you're going to raise that baby uh, as a family, <laughs> just like the Lord would want. Yeah. Anyway, regardless of uh, the he said, she said bullshit, Jerry Falwell Jr., a parent cuck who loves it, yeah. was... Uh, reported to have fully stepped down from his position at Liberty University following this news. But then that all changed because he appears to be publicly fighting with the university that his dad founded over the idea that he should resign. Quote, I have not resigned. <laughs> Falwell told Politico on a phone call on Monday evening. Asked how the news reports of him resigning had gotten out. He replied, I don't know. I have not resigned. I will be on indefinite leave, Falwell repeated, which we assumed he, he's referring to the indefinite leave that he's been on since... The boat photo, <laughs> yeah, uh, which is now snowballed into a new and updated and much bigger and sexier indefinite leave. Yeah. So, you know, for the meantime, someone else is going to have to man the ship, mm -hmm. which is uh, just spinning around in the ocean aimlessly right now at this point. Well, you know, there's like kids there. They can't even like it's like, oh, you can't even wear a fucking crop top to class or like, yeah, like shorts. Like, hey, women, no shorts. Yeah. And no, meanwhile, yeah, the just... fucking president's out in a threesome with his wife and some pool boy. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's uh, a bit hypocritical. But yeah. hey, there's a guy, if they need a new president, there's a guy who has recently been made available who also loves cuckoldry yeah. and uh, apparently found Jesus uh, in prison. That man's name is Roger Stone. Yeah. So give Liberty University to Roger Stone. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can replace that giant Nixon tattoo on his back with a giant Jesus tattoo. Yeah. And and all the students can fuck his wife. He's cool with yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It's More part of the... Uh, yeah. Anyways, cool. Uh, let's talk about the Conways, America's real first family. But first, uh, don't be like Jerry Falwell Jr. with all your personal business out there in the open. Protect yourself, or at least your internet, with today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Well, when you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? P.U. I mean, unless you want to see what's going on with the pool boy and your what. Never mind. Uh, you don't want random passersby looking in on you. So why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing that door. Jerry Falwell, he knows all about ExpressVPN. He, <laughs> chooses, he chooses not to use it. He likes the idea of being watched. Yeah, he has it on his uh, browser, but he doesn't turn yeah. it on. He just likes no, knowing just... that everyone's watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my ISP can see me, and I don't care. I yeah. love it. Did you know that your internet service provider knows every single website you visit? Jerry. And what's <laughs> worse is they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use your data to target you. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity cannot be seen by anyone. We use ExpressVPN on all of our devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have ExpressVPN. The best part is, using ExpressVPN, it is as easy as closing that bathroom door. You just fire up the app, you click one button, and boom, you're protected. ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like us and you believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash today daily right now. Use our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash today daily, or click it down in the description, and you can get an extra three months free. If you're going to get it anyway, you might as well get the three months and use our link. Yep. So that's expressvpn.com slash today daily. So the Conways. 
Where to even begin yeah. with this one? So, uh, all right, we're going to shorten this whole intro a bit and assume that you're at least tangentially aware of the Conway family. But if not, uh, here's a very brief starter for you. The most famous of the bunch is, of course, Kellyanne Conway, former campaign manager and current, mm, until this weekend, yeah. uh, counselor to President Donald Trump. Uh, essentially his right-hand woman who frequently goes to bat for him against the press in mostly irritating and infuriating and just full of lies ways. Yeah. Uh, but she's she's damn good at what she does because she's a sociopath. Yeah. Uh, even, yeah, it sucks to be good at something that's pretty evil, but, but she, she does it really she's well. She's really good at it. Uh, she's, she's mastered the Gish Gallop mm -hmm. uh, method of uh, debate. Yeah. Where you just you just spew a bunch of shit in front of the other person and make them clean it up. That and and countless uh, in any interview, what about isms? Mm -hmm. Like immediately without giving a breath. Yeah. Like, well, you know, what about she, this? She is a black belt in bad faith. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Even worse than Falwell Jr. Yeah. yeah, so you know about her, but then there's George Conway, her husband, a plump and jolly looking old Republican. Yeah, uh, old school Republican. Yeah, yeah. who uh, despite his party affiliation, hates Donald Trump and has been doing everything within his power to thwart his reelection campaign. Most recently by acting as one of the most public facing heads of the Lincoln Project, which is it's just Republicans who hate Trump and love Biden because Biden's actually conservative and, and we're fucked and you <laughs> stop giving them money. Yeah. They, they pay themselves more than any other political action committee like in recent memory. Like yeah. they, this is literally just a get rich quick scheme. George them. Conway like slinked back to the, his house in New Jersey carrying a bag of gold. Yeah. I have to go back to my family now. Like donate. If you're going to fucking donate money, these are the last people you should be donating to. I mean, just even get, even donate to Biden or actually donate to local candidates. In your and they're meme thieves. Yeah, they, they steal they're memes. They're, memes. They're the fuck Jerry politics. And they fuck, repurpose them. Fuck the Lincoln Project. Yeah. All my homies hate the Lincoln Project. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyways, enter Claudia Conway, their teenage TikToking and tweeting daughter who apparently fucking hates her parents. Yeah. And look, we get it. A lot of teenagers hate their parents, but she really, really hates her parents. And apparently she has plenty of good reasons outside of their political careers to hate them. Yeah. But Claudia has been on very social platforms for a while now, uh, but recently she started going viral, uh, first for her outward support of the Black Lives Matter movement and videos critical of President Trump, which somehow struck people as odd, coming from the daughter of Kellyanne Conway. Mm -hmm. I guess in people's minds they would have thought that Kellyanne would have literally had a leash on her. Yeah, where um, she'd just be like one of those like Washington, D.C. mini-me's. Well, it's like when people th originally thought that, uh, what's the uh, the Trump daughter that doesn't hang out with the rest Tiffany? of the family? Yeah, everyone thought like, oh, Tiffany's probably different because they don't even like her. She came from the other relationship. Uh, she's the one kid that's out yeah. aside from like Baron who was still young at the time. Like, maybe she's different. She's not. No, she's not. Tiffany sucks too. Claudia's different. Mm -hmm. uh, people apparently just didn't understand that kids can have different political views than their parents. But she yeah. does. But just, yeah, imagine, like, all the ways your, your parents irritated you when you were in high school. And now imagine if both of your parents were famous. For terrible reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it seemed as though the attention that Claudia was getting online started to really bother her parents, specifically her mom, considering that she works directly with the person that her daughter and husband were yeah. constantly <laughs> yeah. uh, mocking to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on social media platforms. And listen, we said before, opposites attract. Do we really need to talk about Ann Coulter again? No, no, uh, please don't. <laughs> so about a month after she broke through and gained mainstream notoriety for her tweets and TikToks, her parents demanded that she delete her social media accounts, uh, mainly after she live streamed a fight with her mom who was trying to steal her phone from her. Mm -hmm. uh, for his part, George tweeted that he and his wife do not consent to any communication between the press and their children. So, yeah, at that point we thought, oh, well, I mean, that's the end of that. Yeah. Nevertheless, young Claudia persisted. So cut to this past weekend when she posted the following on Twitter. I'm devastated that my mother is actually speaking at the RNC. Like, devastated beyond compare. I'm officially pushing for emancipation. Buckle up, because this is probably going to be public one way or another, unfortunately. Welcome to my life. My mother's job ruined my life to begin with. Heartbreaking that she continues to go down the path after years of watching her children suffer. Selfish. It's all about money and fame, ladies and gentlemen. As for my dad, politically, we agree on absolutely nothing. We both just happen to have common sense when it comes to our current president. Stop standing him. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, Y'all love to twist everything. I'm not getting emancipated because of my mom's job. It is because of years of childhood trauma and abuse. So big yikes Ooh, there. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. So yeah. 
Then she followed that all up with, this is becoming way too much, so I am taking a mental health break from social media. See y'all soon. Thank you for the love and support. No hate to my parents, please. And I mean, yeah, this is a hell of a lot for a kid to deal with. Yeah. Even if your kids weren't, or if your parents weren't politically famous, it's a lot. Yeah. Being a teenager fucking sucks in general. Yeah. We all know that. And if you're living through it, it gets better. Anyways, we're not sure what the hell went on in the years before her parents became household names across the country, but it doesn't sound good. No. Uh, but following the tweets over the weekend, both of her parents made announcements that they would be stepping back from their political careers to focus on their family, which, I mean, let's be honest, it is the right choice. Yeah. It's one that probably should have been made well before this all boiled over, but at least they both seem to be actually committing to this choice. I mean, yeah. you know, one thing if Kellyanne was like, I'm leaving the White House, but George was still like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking down to the Lincoln Project every day, grinding it out. No big deal. But both of them simultaneously were like, all right, our family's fucked. We need to go try to rescue yeah. whatever's left of it. Well, they, I mean, I'm sure on it's, <laughs> I'm sure that both the, the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign were like, this, get this out of our fucking business. Yeah, both of them uh, didn't like it. But yeah, she, uh, a 15-year-old, Girl successfully bullied both of her parents. That and altered the course of political history. Yeah. Claudia has a fucking bright future ahead she of sure her. Does. I, I think she's awesome. Oh, yeah. One of our other tweets before she went into the whole emancipation thing was that, like, it was like Thursday or Friday, she changed her mom's, uh, like, her specific cell phone ring on her mom's phone to wet-ass pussy. <laughs> so, like, if she's her mom great. got a call from Claudia, like, in a meeting with Trump. Yeah. Like, yeah. Bring great. a mop and bucket. Anyways, Kellyanne Conway announced that she would be leaving her White House role by the end of the month. No word yet on if she's giving up or, or will give up her time slot at the RNC. I think that's that would probably, you would assume, up in the air. because I don't know. I, if I were Claudia, that's happening I'd right ultimatum, now. <laughs> ultimatum on that. But uh, yeah, we have to point out, Kellyanne, she has lasted longer than pretty much anyone else in the entire Trump administration. There's been a lot of turnover. Yeah. Uh, she's lasted at least a few hundred Scaramucci <laughs> The terms. Mooch. Yeah. Which is, I believe, what is it, 10 days? The Mooch controversy seems a decade ago. I mean, yeah. It, it's crazy. Yeah, the Mooch. I mean, her, Kellyanne Conway and uh, Betsy DeVos and uh, what's his, uh, the, uh, Miller, Stephen Miller. Yeah, like, those are the only OGs. Yeah. Pretty yeah. crazy. Oh, and uh, uh, the brain doctor, Ben Carson. He's still, <laughs> yeah, but who cares about that guy? He's still doing surgery on, like, the housing problem. Yeah, yeah, country. housing <laughs> and urban development. Yeah. Hey. I worked on brains. Yeah. What's the difference between a brain? Everything's going great. Everyone <laughs> thought I died last month, so yeah. I'm just sneaking by. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a little odd that uh, what would get her to finally leave the White House is this. And now and, of all time. And times. now it's like just as the election is really about to make the next few months just absolutely unbearable mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah. Um, and Mr. George Conway, he's stepping away from the Lincoln Project, which we assume means he'll be tweeting less himself as well which he's is good yeah uh so yeah hopefully they get their shit sorted out uh but based on claudia's reaction to the news it's uh not going to be easy because she she claims to have also found out that her parents were leaving the spotlight to focus on their family by reading about it on social media and not so, directly from uh them. great work mom and dad already off to a good start she also claimed that like they were planning on getting a divorce but like waiting until <laughs> Until like the election's over or some shit. Well, because both they don't want to share the profits from the inevitable book, the inevitable books that they'll both be writing. Yeah, yeah. and like also if they did in fact uh, abuse her, it's probably probably going to be a pretty rough time for her if now they're both staying home all day. Yeah, uh, presumably abusing her more. Yeah, well, you, you, George George's book title: "I fucked Kellyanne Conway in the ass hard." Here's my story. <sighs> Look it up. Look up the, uh, what's her name? What is it? Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter's story. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Wonderful art. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's a bit odd of a segue from everything we've talked about so far today to talk about DC movies. <laughs> Plus, it's really fucking hot in here. Superheroes? So we're going to keep this brief. But the DC fandom was fandom. <laughs> this past weekend, and it was stupidly hard to watch. You couldn't watch this on any platform. You had to go to their fucking website and watch it in a, on an embedded video that you couldn't even Chromecast. Oh. So if you wanted to watch it anywhere but at your computer screen or on a laptop, you, like watching it on your phone, yeah. it was terrible. But that didn't matter because everything just ended up on YouTube yeah. immediately after it aired there anyway. So let's just talk about what we saw so you can disagree with us in the comments. And uh, let's get it out of the way real quick. I just got to say, and this is going to be very brief because it is fucking hot in here. Uh, I thought the Justice League trailer was garbage. 
I think the song didn't fit at all. I thought it looked like a fan edit. Uh, like, uh, just yeah. a, here's a best of of what uh, Joss Whedon refused to show you. I, I have zero interest in it. Yeah. I mean, congrats to all you Snyder Cut people. It's, uh, it's a weird goal that you've devoted your, the last, like, four years to. Mm-hmm. But I guess you accomplished something. I think it sets a horrible precedent for sure like, does. the future of, like, uh, yeah. you know, fandom-based uh, filmmaking. And we but, talked uh, about it before. It's, like, such a weird, uh, passionate position if you consider the studio-released and approved by all parties story about how Scott Snyder left the project for a very good Zack reason. Snyder. Sorry, Zack Snyder. Scott Snyder is a comic book one. Mm-hmm. Zack Snyder left the project for a, a very good reason. Isn't yeah. It? His it was a very tragic died. reason, and Joss Whedon took over the picture. Like, oh, yeah, fuck that guy. And now everyone's like, yeah, fuck Joss Whedon. It's like, he, c- come on, he finished this because Warner Brothers was like, hey. we need to find someone to finish this. Ray Fisher did say that he was uh, horrible to work with, which I believe. I am not, I'm yeah, not I'm a sure fan not of a, Joss a Whedon peach. at all. Yeah, exactly. But, I'm not uh, a huge fan of him, so yeah, Justice whatever. Justice League, I, whatever. I think the aspect ratio is stupid as fuck. Like, yeah. I, movies, especially a movie that is not going to be in theaters, is going straight to a streaming service. Everyone has a fucking 16 by 9 TV in their house, mm-hmm. and you're 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 editing this thing to look like an old fucking network TV show from the 90s. Dumb. I don't. I, I mean, it, it, I are we sure that it's not going to air in that 16 by 9 ratio? I I don't know. I don't know. Also, I think it's fucking hilarious because some of the discourse I've seen online is like, yeah, this is how it should look. It was too bright in Joss Whedon's vision, and it was like I remember after Man of Steel came out. There was YouTube videos of people color yeah. correcting that mm-hmm. movie because they were like, it's too bland. Yeah. But nobody knows what the fuck they want. Yeah. And everyone, every Snyder Cut person is going to be like, yep, that yep, was his they, vision. The most perfect film ever Four made. Four hours long. Perfect. Because if I admit that uh, it didn't live up to all that hype and time and money, well, and I look like my life idiot. loses meaning and I look like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Uh, so, also, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's a, a crossover there with people who are convinced about a secret cut of Suicide Squad and now are probably going to be like this new Suicide Squad, which looks great, yeah. is going to be garbage. But I really liked this trailer. Obviously, it doesn't show off too much except for the characters, but I lo- it looks bonkers. It looks insane. The costume designs are crazy. It mm-hmm. ob- very obviously isn't going to take itself very seriously. Yeah. There's some behind-the-scenes stuff. It uh, looks like it's going to be like a 70s uh, wartime action yeah. adventure. Looks fun. Looks like everyone's going to have a lot of fun with this movie. Yeah. And uh, what else did we get? We got those video game trailers. So like, there's the, the Suicide the Squad, Suicide Squad great, game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it's a cinematic trailer. So, but I, it looks cool and it looks like four player co-op. Yeah, and it's rock steady games. Uh, and I guess it takes place in the Arkham universe. Now, what gets confusing though mm-hmm. is the WB Montreal game Arkham Knights looks like another Arkham game and features the same premise as where uh, Arkham. Uh, Arkham Knight, I think was the last one. Uh, left yeah. off, yeah, but is not canonical to that. It's a completely separate thing. But mm-hmm. uh, that one looks fun too. I mean, they look like fun games. Yeah, it's a Batman game where you can't play as Batman, but you can play as uh, Robin, Batgirl, Batwoman, They're and gonna Nightwing. They're going to make him DLC for like a thousand dollars. Well, and he, you, you're going to get to play as Batman. Yeah, <laughs> the the game. Game. yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the games look fun. Very odd that Warner Brothers was trying to sell this studio, like sell off Weedy Games. I mean, I think they still might be. Yeah. I don't know what the, the status is with that. Uh, but, but, hey, uh, the Batman, Robert Pattinson, looks great. Fucking looks fantastic. Yes, very I, excited for it. I, yeah, I'm... Like, I, I had a decent fe- feeling about this, but also, like, we've had so much Batman yeah. in my lifetime that I'm like, you know what, even... I, I just wasn't that that excited about it because mm-hmm. we've, we've been spoiled. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, this looks fucking great. <laughs> it <laughs> really does. I'm like, okay, fuck yeah. Yeah. And Robert Pattinson... I told y'all. Yes, I told you. If you haven't, for some reason, given him the time of day, please go watch uh, The Lighthouse and uh, Good, time. Uh, Good Time. Yeah. Uh, they're not easy watches by any means, but no. it'll give you a <laughs> great idea of the kind of character actor that he is, and you sh- and it should wash away any worries that you have about him playing yeah. a- The Batman. Mm-hmm. Plus that fight scene where, like, oh, no he's just beating just the fucking shit out of that let guy. Let Batman kill people, Yeah. <laughs> Bashing people's skulls in with his fists. I dig it. I think it's great. The yeah. song choice is even... Is even I, the you know, Batmobile looks fucking sick. Yeah. The song choice, it's like... For a while, I was like, okay. The slowing down classic... Something what is now classic rock songs. Works. But it works. It's fine. I like it. Yeah. Big deal. Uh, so those are fun. I just... Listen. I'm happy that you're happy about Justice League. Yeah, congrats. I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to sit down for four hours and rewatch it. Nope. Uh, so that's on you. 
But speaking of movies to watch, uh, we're going to be posting details tomorrow about our Bill and Ted watch along. We're going to yeah. be watching the brand new movie on Friday with you. We're all going to rent it at the same time. We're going to press play at the same time. And we're going to shoot the shit for a while. So hang out with us. Uh, there's also going to be a prize pack that's going to be given away. We'll have details on that. Uh, the landing page for the stream should be up tomorrow. So hit the bell yeah. to remind yourself. Or you know what? While you're here, hit the bell down below so you get all of our video notifications. Mm -hmm. Then you'll get that one for sure as well. Yeah. Why haven't you? We never even talk about this. Hit the bell. Hit the bell, guys. What are you doing? Also, please, can we please get to 200,000 subscribers so I can cut my fucking hair? <laughs> Although it actually is working out. It's gotten to the point where I can go on walks and not get a sunburn on my neck. Nice. Yeah. It's you, a safety thing. You'll now. save so much money in sunscreen now. Exactly. And cancer. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Anyways, uh, well, watch our most recent episode of Weekly Weird News. I uh, just went up yesterday, so check that out. Also, a new episode of News Dump where uh, Lori Lachlan and Becky's going to jail. And we will see you guys soon for some tech news. Mm -hmm. mm. Bye. Bye.